Good evening, everyone. If you turn in your missalette to page, it's on the top of page 32. We'd like to go over the psalm. I'll sing it once, and then I'll have you uh, follow. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thank you. Our opening song is number 741, All Are Welcome. Of faith and vault of grace. 
afternoon. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Let's call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are kind of Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does the honor 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow came down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Large crowds gathered around him. He got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. He spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of its roots. Some seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold, whoever has ears ought to hear. Cyprus approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to them has not yet been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. For many one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears, They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, 
but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on the rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for time. And when some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. These readings made me think today of a little quote from Teddy Roosevelt. And I just want to read this quote from Teddy Roosevelt, just a little, little, little blurb. Uh, he was given a speech in 1910 in Paris on, I think, like citizenship. I don't know. But in the midst of that speech, he gave this what they call the man in the arena. Many of you probably have heard this speech. Just this little, little quote. It goes like this. This is Teddy Roosevelt. Is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweats and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But he who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. The word of Teddy Roosevelt. So Teddy gave that speech, and it's called The Man in the Arena. It's kind of a popular, you can find like, like inspirational posters and stuff, and with that, with, with the quote on there. But Teddy, I think that, that quote's good because Teddy's talking about what it really means to be a citizen in, in, in his context with someone contributing to the nation giving themselves to the building of this nation, building and spreading of the freedoms and so forth. I think of that because in a real way, I think that's what we're talking about today in these readings. We heard Paul talking to the Romans and Paul talks about that the great difficulties of today is nothing compared to the glory yet to come. But Paul saying those things from the comfort of Corinth. He's not in the midst of the persecution of Rome He's not there suffering yet. He doesn't know the fear, doesn't yet know the anxiety, doesn't yet know the bloodshed that will come to him in Rome. So from his comfort of Corinth, where they just loved him, he's writing those words of encouragement. And so it's easy, we could say, to be upbeat and hopeful when we're in the comfort of Corinth, in the comfort of our homes, and the comfort of not being challenged, not being persecuted, not undergoing the cross, not undergoing great difficulty. But the true measure of the Christian, as Teddy points out, and as Paul points out, as our Lord points out, is the one in the arena. And the arena looks different for everybody. Everybody's arena is different. The battle is different. The cross is different. The blood, the sweat, the tears, the fatigue, it's different for all of us. But to truly be holy, to truly be Christian, to truly become fertile soil, is that we remain in the arena. And we're always battling 
not just for our soul, but for the souls of others. We're not just trying to make ourselves perfect, but help others also become perfect. Not just us to become God's children, but to help others become God's children. And the arena, again, is different. The battles are different. It might be depression. It might be anxiety. It might be chemo. It might be lack of faith. It might be disease. It might be loss. It might be grief. It might be death of someone we love. The arena and the cross and the battle is real. And if we want to become holy, pure, and fertile, we can't escape the arena. We can't run away from that and try to always find God in the comfort, always find God in the easy way out. To truly find that fertile soil, to truly find that holiness, we know what we were made for, we remain in that arena, battling, laboring, enduring each day, offering it, uniting it, finding God within that. And in that we become holy, in that we truly allow our faith to truly be faith, not just nice words or pious platitudes, but something real in the midst of my cross, in the midst of my suffering, in the midst of my illness, in the midst of my chemo, in the midst of my hurt and my loss, God is here because I'm fighting to be with him. I'm fighting to remain with him. I'm fighting to cling on to him. And in that, others will see God. In that, others will see life and light and love. And I can bring others to God because of my fight, because of my battle, because of my remaining in that arena of, of this world, not fleeing, but fighting it so others might have life. And that really is our baptism. In baptism, we become priest, prophet, king. We lay down our lives so others might have life. We give witness to the gospel so others might know and believe. And we lead people on into the prosperity of the kingdom where one day we hope to be with them forever as saints. We can't do any of that. We can't live out any of our baptism if we don't stay in that arena as horrible, as hard, as challenging as it may be at times. Because those arenas is where Christ leads us. Christ takes us there. Christ leads us there. Christ is with us there. To not just battle, but to find him and to help other people find him. And that's how we become fertile. That's how the church is fertile. And the seed of the word, the seed of our deeds, the seed of our faith take root and bear fruit because you and I are battling. You and I remain in that arena. You and I find grace and God and joy even on the cross. Remember, we look at that cross and all of that agony, all of that brutality in the midst of that arena, most joyful man who ever lived. He's doing it for the Father and for us. And we have those supernatural eyes to see and understand every cross and every arena in that light. And us working together may help to bring all people to know God, to see God, and give our lives to God. Not because we found a cheat code to do it simply, because we fought through it. We battled each day, and we loved intensely our Lord and others. We persevere, help each other, love each other, and keep battling so we may become fertile and fruitful and bring all people into paradise where one day we hope to be forever as a family of saints. That's all I got. Love you. Let's offer, um, no, Professor Faith.
Let's do our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Present now our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the bishops and priests, that they may govern the church with God's wisdom and serve the faithful with Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may guide the minds of all civil leaders so as to promote the common good according to God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish will be a vibrant community of prayer evangelization, and charitable action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. For the grace that will transform our lives into rich soil that bears abundant fruit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military, for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders. May they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Dominic Zangrilli, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Isaiah Perry and Betty McCorkle Wasser, who died this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please add your own intentions at this time. Pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Holy God, we come before you this day with great faith, know you hear and answer all prayers according to your will. And may we, who each battle our unique crosses and are put into our own unique arenas, not flee, but become victorious in those arenas, not through escaping them, but through seeing you, Lord, in them and being empowered by you and to receive your grace to endure whatever the enemy throws at us. Because all of that is hard and challenging. We support each other in the fight, encourage each other, love each other, walk beside each other, and give each other hope, love, and encouragement for the battle, the journey, and the experience of joy of doing God's will. And we ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for preparation of gifts is number 512, Christ Be Our Light.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you gave us our Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in our disobedience. And so with all the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we now acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Story of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've had us for that you be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, blessed as part of the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 830, Seeds Scattered and Sown.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that Thursday is the second, second time, uh, week, 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 week two, of adoration with, with song and reflection by seminarian Brandon. So come at 7. There'll be refreshments afterwards. It was a great time this past week. Um, I think 50, 60, 60 folks came. And uh, nice time afterwards. So just please come, worship our Lord, and uh, have some snacks afterwards. And a uh, great time to kind of just be, be together as a parish. So Thursday at 7, week 2 of those. So all I got... Have a great week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Masses ended, go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 517 Praise to you, O Christ our Savior. <laughs>